Hi everyone, welcome to Tentocent. What can you see exactly in the center of the tooth? A red area that signifies blood, an area rich in vascularity and it is soft tissue, enamel, dentin and cementum are hard tissues of the tooth. Only soft tissue present in center of tooth is called pulp. How it appears under microscope is called histology and how things are arranged inside it are called zones. So that is the topic for today's video, histology of pulp or zones of pulp, which can be an important long question for you. So let's start before starting quickly, subscribe to Tentocent and also give a like to this video. Let's first see what should be the contents of your answer. Definition, anatomy, zones, most important than histology diagram then composition what all things are present and how they are arranged in different zones then the blood and then nerve supply of the pulp so let's start what is pulp it is soft connective tissue origin is from dental papilla as we have seen during tooth development dental papilla can give rise to d for dentin and p for pulp so this pulp has beautiful cells erodontoblast cells which cells form dentin so pulp has an important role to support dentin coming to the definition we can learn it by dividing it into four parts so first part says that it is richly vascularized and innovated vessels and nerves and second part says that it is the connective tissue of mesodermal origin third part says that it is enclosed by dentin from all the sides but despite that it can have communications with the periodontal ligament so that is the fourth part so that is how you can remember the definition anatomy of the pulp pulp cavity that is a space occupied by pulp pulp is divided into two part pulp in the crown is called coronal pulp which is also known as pulp chamber pulp in the root is called radicular pulp also known as root canals Coronal pulp is centrally located in the crown and it has four, six surfaces, buccal, lingual, mesial, distal like the surfaces of a tooth and a roof and a floor. You can imagine that it is like a room with four walls and a roof and a floor. Now the extensions of these pulp chambers, these projections into the cusps are known as pulp horns. Number of pulp horns equal to the number of cusps. Radicular pulp starts from cervical region goes towards the apex. Now it is single in anterior teeth because they have single root, multiple in posterior teeth because they have multiple root. They are continuous with the periapical region that is Peri means around the apical region through an opening which is called a pical foramen. Very, very important. Bye bye question. Now, this opening in the mature tooth it becomes narrower because dentin forms around it. Now, pical foramen diameter is 0.4 mm in maxillary and 0.3 mm in mandibular. That is important for entrance. Now, here you are getting an important term accessory canals. What are these? They are additional canals extending laterally from the root canals towards the periodontal ligament. So, they are canals passing through root dentin. They can be seen anywhere along the root but they are most numerous in the apical third of the root important viva question and entrance question as we have drawn here they are most numerous in apical third how they are formed root is formed with the help of the layer hers but if there is premature loss of hers what will happen dentin will not form there and a connection will be left between the pulp and the pdl also the second way is if there is any blood vessel during the forming dentin then again a connection will be left so it can form in two ways what is their clinical significance what do you think if there is any infection of the pulp it can travel through this these canals to the pdl and also if there is infection any infection in the pdl it can travel through these canals into the pulp so it has an important role in spread of infection and that is important viva question what is their role now the volume of pulp is little 0 0.02 cc per to the all teeth combined it is 0.38 cc that is important for your entrance now coming to the most important part zones of pulp but it appears to be very complex difficult but we can see a lot of cells here so how can we identify the different zones? So let's just take out this pulp from the tooth and see only pulp. So as we can see on the periphery of the pulp, the outermost layer is formed of the cells, columnar shaped cells, which are called odontoblast cells. They have their nuclei, which is placed towards the basal end of the cell as we are drawing here. So that is the first zone, the outermost zone. Next to this odontoblast cells, nothing is there. So that zone is free of cells. That is second zone, cell-free zone. Third zone, as we are drawing here, is made up of cells again, which is cell-rich zone. A lot of cells are there. And exactly in the center of the pulp, what do we have? Pulp core, what do we have? We have blood vessels shown here with red color and nerves shown here with yellow color. So these blood vessels and nerves enter apical forum and reach here in the center and they branch extensively, as we can see, and their branches extend to the outermost region in between the odontoblast. Odontoblast ke beech mein jati and ko supply karte and supply these cells. So those are the four zones starting from outside to inside. That that is odontoblastic zone, cell free zone, cell rich zone and pulp core that is the center. How you can remember these zones by just saying the word pulp? How? First zone P is the periphery of the pulp which is made up of odontoblast. So it is odontoblastic zone. Second zone U is that is under odontoblast. What is there? Nothing is there. So that is cell free zone. Third zone L which is made up of lots of cells. So it is cell rich zone. Fourth P is pulp core that is the center of the pulp. So that is how you can remember these four zones and also in that order only starting from the outside to the inside. So let's see how to draw this for your exam in the diagram. And you can show all, all these four zones odontoblastic zone. 
then the cell free zone is also known as zone of wheel it is mainly seen in the coronal pulp cell rich zone is again seen in the coronal pulp and pulp core it is major blood vessels and nerves now let's write more about these zones odontoblastic zone has it lines the outer purple wall what is their odontoblast cell but only their cell bodies their processes are going into the dentin and what are they doing here they are forming secondary dentin here so that is the first zone second zone why this free zone is required when nothing is there this zone is required to accommodate odontoblast odontoblast ki help karti hai provide space to them during their tooth development and function so they need space for movement second concept is that it could be an artifact just an error during the formation of section zone may not be there what is present in this zone no, no cells but few fibers may be there so that is the second zone third cell rich zone with cells fibroblasts and undifferentiated mesenchymal cells and also it has extensive vascular system and the last one in the center is the pulp core it has many cells like cell rich zone and it has extensive vascular supply and nerve supply as we can show here this veins arteries and nerves now all these zones are better seen in the coronal pulp their distinction is less in the radicular pulp now histology of pulp what can we draw in the diagram first we need to prepare our decalcified section of the tooth that is we put the tooth in the acid it becomes soft then we prepare its section and then we do hne staining hematoxylin and eosin staining and the section that we see under microscope will show these colors blue and pink so let's draw the diagram the first zone odontoblastic zone that is made up of columnar shaped cells their processes extending into dentinal tubules they have their nuclei towards the basal and next to this first zone we have cell free zone no cells only fibers third is cell rich zone where we are showing all these cells and the fourth one towards the center is the pulp core where we are showing cells and blood vessels we will draw their nuclei nuclei of the blood vessels also endothelial cells and we will draw more nuclei in the pulp core along with the fibers into the pre-dentine first which is lightly stained odontoblastic processes and then they are extending into the dentine which is more deeply stained so those are the labels odontoblastic zone cell free zone cell rich zone pulp core dentine and pre-dentine now let's see what is the composition of pulp it is made up of cells which itself can be a five marks node odontoblast fibroblast undifferentiated mesenchymal cell what are other two types defense cells and pulver stem cells apart from that we have extracellular matrix made up of fibers and ground substance first let's talk about all the cells first is odontoblast cell where they are present in the odontoblastic zone they are the most distinctive cells alag se hi dikhte hain they are the second most prominent cell remember that so they are arranged in single row that is called palisading as they like all the cells are arranged in the same level but sometimes they can appear to be arranged in two to three rows due to the crowding of these odontoblasts and that can be called pseudo stratified appearance matlab aisa nahi hai but it appears so pseudo means false stratified means layers now their body is in the periphery of the pulp near the predentine but their process it goes inside the dentinal tubules number of odontoblasts corresponds to number of dentinal tubules they are lesser in root pulp their shape also changes they are columnar shape in the crown as we can see here and they become cuboidal in the mid portion and they become flat ovoid or spindle shaped in the apical region so that can be why a question what is the shape of a odontoblast in different regions of the pulp now if we see the size of the cell it is 5 to 7 microns in diameter and 25 to 40 microns in length and this cell has lot of organelles large oval nucleus and enough organelles because it is synthetic cell inside odontoblastic process we cannot see much organelles occasionally mitochondria and vesicles containing proteoglycans may be seen and then we can have gap junctions tight junctions and desmosomal junctions between these cells junctional complexes where these odontoblast cells changes into odontoblastic process and there we can see actin filaments as we have drawn here now this area where there is nothing no organelles are there and this junctional complex is there this together these two things together is known as terminal bar apparatus of odontoblast cell and here the diameter of the cell is narrowed down it becomes 3 to 4 microns now the lifespan of odontoblast when that till the tooth is viable jab tak tooth hai tab tak odontoblast hai now the shape of odontoblast it changes with the functional activity of the cell so it has been seen that there are different stages in odontoblast in light microscopy we can see secretory cell when it is secreting or resting cell when it is not secreting with the electron microscopy an additional stage is seen between these two which is called transitional or intermediate stage now let's see how the cell appears in these three stages in secretory stage it is an elongated cell as we have seen here you can see here it is basal nuclei Base base of basophilic cytoplasm, then prominent organelles, Golgi apparatus, rough endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, and vesicles in odontoblastic process. Secretory granules are there. In the transitional stage, which is seen only in electron microscopy, cell becomes narrower, and then less organelles are there. 
chromatin condensation is seen inside the nucleus and autophagic vacuoles can be seen in the resting state cell becomes small cell it is stubby cell short and thick cell isko kuch kanda nahi hai it has little cytoplasm basophilic nucleus no organelles are there secretory granules are not there but it has lipid vacuoles as we can see here so these are the three stages in the life cycle of odontoblast now these cells are end cells that is they cannot divide they have lost the ability to divide so what if these cells die and we need new odontoblast they will come from differentiating cells from cell rich zone which cells undifferentiated mesenchymal cells and that can be important and interesting question now let's talk about the second cells fibroblast cells they are present in cell rich zone they are most numerous cells uh, what is their function collagen fiber formation and ground substance of pulp their shape steeler shape they have extensive processes as we can see here these processes are there which are come joined through the junctions now their cytoplasm is likely stained homogeneous and they have large oval stained deeply stained nucleus and they can have lot of organelles again because they are synthetic cells now these these cells you know they can also ingest and degrade matrix fibers bana bhi sakte hain aur fibers ko tod bhi sakte hain so they have dual function now these cells they are active cells during young pulp they are synthesized mat matrix and they are plump cytoplasm mote se hain but in aging pulp they become flattened rounded or spindle shaped cells as we can see here short with short processes and less number of processes and then they are termed fibrocytes so that is important why our question what is difference between fibroblast and fibrocyte so one is active cell in young pulp one is inactive cell in aging pulp third cells and differentiated mesenchymal cells also seen in cell rich zone they are primary cells in the young pulp they have totally potent role that is whenever there is need in the pulp they can differentiate into odontoblast fibroblast macrophage any type of these cells they where are they seen along the blood vessels cell rich zone pulp core mein bhi dikhte hai they are larger than fibro plus they have polyhedral shape large oval central nucleus and their number decreases with age so now their defense cells which are again seen in the cell rich zone by this first one let's see this one this is histocytes macrophage it can have lot of granules inside because it has engulfed some material second cell next to that we can see this this is dendritic cell it has dendrites processes so this is like an antigen presenting which will identify the antigen so to identify antigen it will have to go near the odontoblast because antigen can come from outside so it can go along the odontoblast or near the odontoblastic process it dendrite its dendrites can go there and they can identify the antigen and can present it to lymphocytes so they are antigen presenting cell and they have role in immuno surveillance that means they keep a guard they check karte rehte hai ki kaun gusra aur kaun nahi gusra then the third cells here we can see mast cells they have lot of granules fourth cell plasma cells as we can see here each centric nucleus and cartwheel shape nucleus then we can have all the blood vessel element cells like we can have neutrophils here lymphocytes here basophils here eosinophils and monocytes so all these cells they are normal residents of the pulp and they become active during inflammation like in caries in any irritation or any trauma now coming to pulpal stem cells they are of two types dental pulpal stem cells or the stem cells coming from the exfoliated deciduous teeth shed they are more in the coronal pulp than radicular pulp why they are important for us they are pluripotent cells that is they can become angiogenic blood vessels bana sakte hai they can chondrogenic form cartilage they can become osteogenic can form bone adipogenic adipocytes bana sakte hai and neurogenic can form nerves so they can form so many things so they are very important for us they should be preserved so these cells are suitable cell source for future they can be cryo preserved and they can be used they have applications in regenerative dentistry whenever the need requires we can use these cells to produce all these tissues now we come to the fibers which are seen in cell rich zone collagen fibers mainly length 10 to 100 nanometers cross striations at 64 nanometer two types mainly type 1 and type 3 but traces of type 5 and 6 odontoblast produces type 1 fibroblast produces type 3 irregularly scattered throughout the pulp they can also be seen in the pulp core so they are more in the apical region of the pulp as compared to the coronal region and their number increases with age so cells decrease with age and fibers increase with age of the pulp so fine fibers fibrillin can also be seen and elastic fibers are not seen in the pulp that is why it is called specialized connective tissue now the ground substance can be seen in pulp core so what is present in ground substance it is semi fluid gel like consistency collagen fibers the major structural component it forms the major framework and the support system for other components then glycoproteins like fibronectin integrins osteoderms can also be seen they provide support to other cells and transportation of nutrients from blood vessels to cell and vice versa 
then they get proteoglycans like chondroitin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, heparin sulfate, hyaluronic acid. Now chondroitin A, B and hyaluronic acid are more in early pulp and they become less in aging pulp and glycosamine glycans part of these are hydrophilic. They can help in the movement of water and ions and can act as reservoir for growth factors. Growth factors can be stored here. Glycoproteins can provide additions between the cell and the extracellular matrix so they can hold the cells and they have very important role. Now coming to the blood supply. It is extensively vascular blood vessels enter the apical foramen so as they go upwards they can give branches in the radicular pulp and as they reach the coronal pulp they show extensive branching and they form a capillary network which is known as subodontoplastic plexus of these capillaries the arteriovenous anastomosis can be seen where arteries and veins may be directly connected directly and fenestrations in the capillaries that means these capillaries may have holes pores because of which they help in providing rapid movement of nutrients towards the cells now pericytes what are pericytes they are capillary associated fibroblasts these fibroblast cells which are present around the capillaries they can regulate the blood flow the largest artery is 50 to 100 microns and veins and venules 100 to 150 micron diameter now pulp has one of the largest pulpal pressure in the body fluid it is highest highest in the pulp and pulpal blood flow is different in arterioles venules and capillaries of pulp lymphatic vessels can also be seen which follow blood vessels small and thin wall and they also show discontinuity in their wall they do not have rbc's but they have lymphocytes now talking about the nerve supply in pulp is abundant nerve supply two types sensory and autonomic sensory is mainly for pain perception these are actually the branches of maxillary and mandibular division of trigeminal nerve which enter the apical for then they follow the blood vessels but they do not give much branching in the radicular pulp but as they reach the coronal pulp they can form network of nerves which is known as plexus of brush cow or parietal layer of nerves very very important by went interest question so this plexus has large myelinated a delta and beta fibers which are fast conducting they mediate sharp pain and smaller unmyelinated c fibers which are slow conducting and important for dull pain so that is very important now these myelinated fibers lose their their myelin sheath and again they form a rich network of free nerve fibers near cell free zone so as they reach reach here in the cell free zone they form an extensive network they form special receptors of pain and their free terminals as we can see they extend towards the odontoblast cells enter the odontoblastic zone near the pre predentin and inner dentin and that is how they help in dentin sensitivity now feature unique to these receptors is that they can always elicit pain as the response in or kuch samajh hi nahi aata they cannot different between heat touch pressure or chemicals because they do not have receptors for all these they only have receptors for pain so whatever happens i have only thing that is felt is pain recently neurotransmitters have been identified autonomic nerves are sympathetic fibers they are from cervical sympathetic ganglion they join trigeminal ganglion nerve and then they follow the sensory nerves and the blood vessels enter the apical foramen they innervate smooth muscles of the capillaries so they regulate blood flow they are also mediated by some neurotransmitters and they get activated during stress and pain so let's come to the summary of the histology of pulp so first is the definition of the pulp then is the anatomy of the pulp coronal pulp radicular pulp apical foramen and accessory canals then the most important important zones of the pulp these four zones are odontoblastic zone cell free zone or zone of bell cell rich zone and pulp core then the histology diagram then the composition two parts cells and extracellular matrix five cells which itself can be a short note odontoblast cells there are three stages fibroblast fibrocyte undifferentiated mesenchymal cells and dependent cells and pulpous stem cells extracellular matrix fibers and ground substance and then we have to talk about the blood supply so it is extensive different types penetrated capillaries are seen subodontoblastic plexus of capillaries arteriovenous anastomosis and pulpal pressure is highest nerve supply two types sensory is mainly plexus of brush cow parietal layer of nerves and it is made up of two types of fibers and autonomic provides regulate the blood flow now let's check what have you learned so let me give you a few mcq zones of pulp from dentin to the center in that order you have to pick your choice most numerous cells of the pulp and also the second most numerous cells of pulp now flexes in pulp is known as so that is all for this video if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning and keep smiling and good luck for your exam see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye